<laughs> now, in your application for the show, you said that the Bulls won six NBA titles in eight years, and because six plus eight equals 14, this is significant to you for some reason. <laughs> Absolutely, because my birthday is on June the 14th. Right. And in 1975, don't mind if I give away my age, mm. and uh, that exact day that I turned 23 was the day that Jordan and the Bulls won their last NBA title. Right. I like the way you said, I'm not afraid to give away my age like your head wasn't already doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then you are in Australia right now. You're talking NBA basketball. You're talking great teams. You're talking great individual players. Takes it off and there's number 23. And, of course, Johnny goes nuts. So we're all getting first time thinking about it now. I just tried to go out there and play my game. I have no idea what you're talking about, Adam. I don't like anybody. I'm not a people person. Strand, you made the pass. Yes. Christian, can you catch the ball? Yes. All the stars were aligned and all the muscles fired at the right time. And I was able to get off the ground and throw one down. I was saving that as a surprise for you. And now, introducing your host for In All Airness, Adam Ryan. Welcome to episode 131. Thanks for joining me. Today, a unique episode. I recently made my first and perhaps last appearance on television. I was a contestant on Hard Quiz, Australia's top rated game show the Australian Broadcasting Corporation's on-demand TV streaming service, ABC iView, describes Hard Quiz thusly. Not satisfied with winning the 2022 Actor Award for Best Comedy Entertainment Program, Tom Gleeson has combed to the nation to find a new bunch of self-nominated experts willing to undergo the hardest test there is. My Hard Quiz appearance aired on April 12, 2023. It was recorded in front of a live studio audience in early September of 2022. Series 8, Episode 10. It's described as follows. Four contestants are after one big brass mug and host Tom Gleeson is in the way. Expert topics this week are Scouts Australia, animated film The Incredibles, NBA superstar Michael Jordan and Penny Farthing Bicycles. No prizes for guessing my specialty topic. Thanks to my best mate of over 40 years, Nicholas, for encouraging me to apply for the show. Special thanks to Hard Quiz contestant producer, Zim, who ensured each of the contestants had a fantastic time on the day of recording. Follow the link in the show notes on your listening app of choice to watch my TV debut. Alternatively, continue listening to this audio and learn how the experience unfolded. Can I justify my self-proclaimed title of Michael Jordan slash NBA history obsessive? Show notes for this episode and access to a huge archive of past episodes are available at inallairness.com. Now, onto the TV show. Tonight on a hard quiz, Esther, engineer, expert subject, Scouts Australia. Laura, escape room game master, expert subject, animated adventure, The Incredibles. Nick, retiree, expert subject, Penny Farthings. Adam, hardware salesperson and podcaster, expert subject, Michael Jordan. Here's your host, Tom Lisa. Yes, g'day. These contestants are cryptocurrencies. The last one to tank will be tonight's Hugwiz champion. <laughs> to be part of the show at home, go to the ABC TV socials. Let's say hello. G'day, Adam. Hey, Tom. How are you? Michael Jordan is your expert subject. Did you get on the bandwagon early or were you just following the crowd? No, I was on there very early, 1989. Oh. So showing my age a little bit there, but that's when I first hopped on the bandwagon. OK. Why? <laughs> Well, I just started recording games on videotape, so you can already see where that's going, I suppose. A bit of a sad story. But, um, yeah, just kept them on tape and watched them over and over and became obsessed with the guy and then the Chicago Bulls and the NBA. Okay, Don't worry, there's been a lot of sad stories on this show. (laughs) Now, in your application for the show, you said that the Bulls won six NBA titles in eight years and because six plus eight equals 14, this is significant to you for some reason. (laughs) Absolutely, because my birthday is on June the 14th. Right. 
and in 1975, don't mind if I give away my age, mm. and uh, that exact day that I turned 23 was the day that Jordan and the Bulls won their last NBA title. Right. I like the way you said, I'm not afraid to give away my age like your head wasn't already doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nick. Tom. You're into penny farthings. <laughs> How did this fascination with antiquated transport start? Well, um, I was holidaying in Tasmania and I saw the championships that they have down there. And I've always ridden bikes. And I thought to myself, these people are having a great time. <laughs> I, want, I want to get in on the action. And, which I did. I, I bought myself one and mm. started practising and uh, I go down there every year. What draws you to the penny farthing? Is it the inconvenience or the high risk of injury? <laughs> well, they're classic. They're classic design. Mm. They're um, simple. Like myself, I suppose. Like... <laughs> Don't drag um, me into it, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> they've been in production for over 100 years and they right. still make them to this day. You race them too, is that I right? race them every year. Yeah, what it. race is this? <laughs> You've got it's... a bit of speed on you there. Yeah, yeah, it was fast enough to win. I can't tell which one's you. <laughs> in... I was at the back at that stage. <laughs> Laura. Hi. You're an escape room game master. Is that a fetish? <laughs> what is that? What's it mean? This uh, is your job, by the way, not your expert subject. Yes. What's uh, it mean? It means I lock people in rooms and I laugh if they don't get out, pretty much. So, yeah, it does sound a bit like a bit. Right, so you create a torturous environment mm. and then people have to escape. Much like this show. Yeah, yeah OK. <laughs> Your subject is The Incredibles. Yeah. Seems like just another kids' film to me. Why, why that one in particular? I just watched it a lot as a kid. I used to work at a DVD rental store and I'd play it constantly because I couldn't play anything else. Oh, right. Yeah. OK, which, which rental store did you work at? Blockbuster? Video Busters. Video Busters. So even, even <laughs> the lowest of the low. Wow. <laughs> so it's like the penny farthing of shops. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Esther. Hi, Tom. Uh, Scouts Australia is your subject. It is. Are you a scout? I am a scout leader in the Ventura section. OK, what's that mean? That's the, the teenage years, cos apparently I like difficult people to work with. OK. <laughs> so you're wearing some scout gear? I am. I'm wearing my scarf. This is from my unit. It's yes. uh, 49C11, right. because it's the Melway's coordinates to our scout hall. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Nerd alert! Anyway. <laughs> now you work in engineering and construction. What are you building at the moment? I am currently rebuilding a runway in New South Wales, which is very exciting. Oh, OK. Yes. What are you doing? Filling in the potholes? Uh, look, <laughs> to a certain extent, yes. Yes. Uh, but making it a bit bigger and a bit wider so large planes can land on it. Oh, wow. And so aeroplanes might leave on time now? <laughs> Probably not. Of course they f***ing won't. <laughs> Let's play. Oh! Expert round. Expert subject. Win or lose five points. Steal an answer. Double points. I ask each of you five questions on your expert subject. Right, you get five points. Wrong, I will take five points from you. The rest of you can steal at any time to get double points. Let's start with Esther and her expert subject, Scouts Australia. In his 1908 handbook, Scouting for Boys, Scouts founder Lieutenant General Robert Baden-Powell coined which two-word motto? <laughs> Esther. Be prepared. Correct. <laughs> Attended by over 10,000 people, the 15th Australian Scouts Jamboree featured appearances by Prime Minister Bob Hawke, Yahoo Sirius and which comedy company grocer? For the steal, it's Adam. Con the fruiterer. Uh, kids entertainment was a little bit more casually racist back then. <laughs> Junior scouts or cubs are mentored by scout leaders with titles inspired by what? Esther. The Jungle Book. Correct. What Rudyard Kipling story collection? The Jungle Book is correct. In 2018, Scouts Australia introduced an alternative version of the Scout Promise that acknowledges community and our world in place of what head of state? Esther. 
the Queen. Correct. <laughs> yes, Scouts updated the promise to resonate with young Australians today. Look at those ungrateful bastards. <laughs> Last question in your set, Esther. Running for over 60 years, Scout Job Week, the fundraising program in which Scouts help the community, was originally known by what rhyming phrase, Esther? Bob a job. Correct. It's probably for the best they changed that. <laughs> Time now for Laura and the Incredibles. The powers of the Incredibles are based on their archetypal family roles, with Dad Bob having what superpower? Laura. Strength. Correct. Yes, the mum is pulled in different directions, so she has super stretch. Uh, the teenage daughter is defensive, so she has invisibility. And boys are hyperactive, so he can run fast. Superheroes are outlawed when multiple lawsuits are filed against Mr Incredible following an accident involving what mode of transport? Laura. A monorail. Incorrect. It's wide open. Wide open. For the steel and sister. A bus. Incorrect. <laughs> Time's up, train. Mm. Writer Sarah Val was cast as daughter Violet after the director heard her voice on which podcast? Laura. This American Life. Correct. <laughs> Due to a series of superhero accidents, designer Edna Mode refuses to add what accessory? Laura. Capes. Correct. What accessory to Mr. Incredible's costume? The cape is correct. Edna is voiced by director Brad Bird. He wanted Lily Tomlin for the role, but she said that she couldn't do the voice as well as him. Last question in your set, Laura. Able to create and fly on shards of ice, Mr Incredible's best friend, Frozone, is voiced by which Pulp Fiction actor, Laura? Samuel L. Jackson. Correct. (laughs) Next set of questions is for Nick on Penny Farthing. Developed in the late 19th century, Penny Farthings derived their name from their wheels being the relative size... Laura for the steal. Of coins? Correct! Double points to you. Of what objects? Coins is correct. Its predecessor was the Velocipede, uh, also known as the Bone Shaker, which had wheels the same size, but it was made of wood. Due to its lack of gears and chain, the speed of a penny farthing is determined by the rate of pedalling and the size of what part? Nick. Uh, The front wheel. Correct. (laughs) And that's why the wheel was so big, so you could get bang for your buck when you pushed the pedal down. That's right. The bigger the wheel, the faster you went. Yeah, and so essentially what happened is we have chains and gears now and that eliminated the need for the big wheel. Correct. Right, so apart from a cry for attention... Why would you ride one now? You're probably right. It's a cry for attention. <laughs> Don't feel sorry for the contestants. A typical penny farthing accident falling face first over the handlebars. Nick. It's called a header. Incorrect. I'll finish the question. Is commonly known as taking a header or coming a what? Adam for the steal. Cropper. Originally raced with penny farthings and still held today, the Austral Wheel Race was first held at what Melbourne venue? Time's up! MCG. Right. The Melbourne Cricket Ground. Last question in your set, Nick. The character Passper 2 rides a penny farthing in a 1956 adaptation of what Jules Verne novel? Nick. 20,000 leagues under the sea. Incorrect. (laughs) Wide (laughs) open! (laughs) Time's up. Around the world in 80 days. Yes, it would have had to be in a submarine penny farthing to be in. (laughs) (laughs) 20,000 leagues under the sea. Yep, with you. Last set of the expert round, it's Adam and Michael Jordan. While playing with the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan had multiple game day rituals, including wearing what piece of clothing from his college basketball days? Adam. He wore his practice shorts under his playing shorts from North Carolina. Correct. (laughs) Following the release of doco series The Last Dance, Michael Jordan gave a rare interview to ABC's Australian Story, discussing the series' omission of which Bulls teammate? Adam. Luke Longley. 
Luke describes your leadership style as carnivorous. <laughs> what, what do you think about that? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can see that from his perspective, quite naturally, yes. In 1984, Jordan signed a deal with Nike to produce his signature Air Jordan sneakers, despite initially wanting to sign on with which other brand? Adam. Converse. Incorrect. It's wide open. For the steal of Tester. Adidas. Correct. Double one steal. Adidas couldn't get their act together at the time, so Nike got the Jordan deal. And when Jordan first saw the sneakers, he wasn't a fan, was he? No, he wasn't uh, particularly keen, and they eventually got him to come around, and his parents had a big say in the fact at that time, given his age as well, that he should uh, stick with Nike and see what they can offer him, and it turned out to be obviously very lucrative going forwards. The Jordan rules, a set of strategies specifically designed to beat Jordan's gameplay, were created by which Detroit team? Adam. The Pistons. Yes, the Jordan rules aim to keep Michael away from the basket or, as former Piston John Sally put it, as soon as he steps in the paint, hit him. Last question in your set, Adam. Michael Jordan's 2009 emotional NBA Hall of Fame speech led to the creation of which internet meme, Adam? The crying Jordan. Correct. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Jordan's speech also got attention for how petty it was ragging on old high school coaches and having a whinge about the cost of tickets for the event. I'd never use an acceptance speech to rag on people. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we've burned through their subjects. Now let's burn through mine. Tom's round. Tom's subject, multiple choice. This week I've been really getting into spaghetti. I love love spaghetti, but not al dente, uncooked and hot. (laughs) This round is multiple choice. Select your answers on your screen, then press the buzzer to lock in the answer. Which of these products is a thinner variation of spaghetti? A. Spaghettini. B. Bucatini. C. Spaghettoni. D. Biscotti. The answer is A. Spaghettini. The word spaghetti comes from spargo for twine and spaghettini is little spaghetti. In the classic spaghetti scene from the film Lady and the Tramp, the restaurant staff serenade the dogs with which song? A, Bella Notte, B, That's Amore, C, Molto Bene, D, Nusen Dorma. The answer is A, Bella Notte. We work in the video store. <laughs> Yeah, the scene nearly didn't get animated because Walt Disney wasn't into the thought of two dogs sharing a restaurant meal. (laughs) Uh, Lucky they cut the scene where they sniff each other's asses. (laughs) Here's Ian Parmenter ballsing up a carbonara on consuming passions. First, I get my spaghetti going and add a little butter. I whisk two whole eggs. I now stir in a little cream. A grinding of black pepper. I like to grate in my own Parmesan cheese. A bacon and excellent dish. Which controversial ingredient does Ian use that is not typical of the quintessential spaghetti carbonara? A. Cheese. B. Pepper. C. Eggs. D. Cream. The answer is D. Cream. Yes, you don't put cream in real carbonara. Or do you? (laughs) Eminem's song lyric, There's vomit on his sweater already, Mum's spaghetti, inspired him to launch what business initiative? A, pasta scented cologne. B, a range of tin spaghetti. C, a restaurant called Mum's spaghetti. D, stain removal spray. The answer is C, a restaurant called Mum's spaghetti. Yeah, Mum's Spaghetti is his restaurant in Detroit and the food is meant to taste like leftovers. (laughs) If you couldn't get a booking, you'd be spewing. (laughs) Last question in my round's worth double points. In 2006, the light-hearted Ig Nobel Prize in physics was awarded to two French scientists for discovering why dry spaghetti does what? A, turns soft when cooked. B, snaps in multiple places. C, falls in a spiral motion. D, keeps a long shelf life. E, expands in water. F, gets stuck in your teeth. 
The answer is B snaps in multiple places. Yes, it's something to do with the waves of vibrations when you bend and release it. All right, at the end of my round, Nick, you're at the bottom on minus 10. Get over here. What happened? I knew the answers. You asked the wrong questions, mate. Round against the clock. Back to your roof, play along at home. Your time starts now. Indiana Jones hates what reptile? Laura. Snakes. Yes. A lob is a longer style version of what haircut? Laura. A bob. Yes. TikTok sensation Jimmy Rees hosted which show with an owl? Esther. Giggle and hoot. Yes. How many feet are there in one yard? Time's up. Three. Which South Australian town is considered the opal capital of the world? Esther. Cooper Petey. Yes. An appendectomy is surgery to remove which organ? Esther. Appendix. Yes. In 2022, KFC used cabbage in burgers due to a shortage of... Adam. Lettuce. Yes. Painted while in a French asylum was Van Gogh's masterpiece... Laura. Uh, Starry Night. Yes. Olympic swimmer Susie O'Neill has the nickname... Time's up! Madam White. survive. I'll ask a question. First to buzz in. If you're right, you're staying. If you're wrong, you're dead to me. You ready? Here we go. <laughs> According to the I Compete Natural Bodybuilding Federation, competitors in which division have harder abs? Bikini model or fitness model? Laura. Bikini. Incorrect, which means you're dead to me. Get over here. So I'm guessing at your video store you didn't watch many bodybuilding videos. No, I don't think we had many of those, unfortunately. Yeah. OK, can you show me how to get out of this escape room? <laughs> I think it might be that way. OK. Out! <laughs> Champion Esther and Adam, get over here because it's time to play hard quiz. Final round, head to head, Michael Jordan versus Scouts Australia. Hard quiz. Now there can only be one hard quiz champion who gets to take home the limited edition big brass mug. What will you do with the mug if you win, Esther? Uh, well, I take a dilly bag on camps with me, so I figure adding the big brass mug as my coffee mug would be a good idea. Oh, might be heavy. It could be, but I'm not hiking, so I'll be fine. What about you, Adam? Well, the Chicago Bulls rivals during the 1990s, arguably you could say with the New York Knicks, uh, they don't have much hardware in uh, Madison Square Garden in New York, so I might just send that over via air mail to the New York Knicks. (laughs) It's a very obscure sledge that I think they may fail to understand. (laughs) It's best of five. Penalty shootout style, harder questions on your expert subjects. So it's Esther's knowledge of Scouts Australia versus Adam's knowledge of Michael Jordan. Let's play. Oh! Now, you're under more pressure tonight because if you win, you will uh, have earned your hard quiz badge. Oh, wow. I want it so much. So I'll put that... I'm putting that away for later. <laughs> Esther. Announced in 2003 and prompting threats to exclude scouts from the Anzac Dawn service was what Scouts Australia development... Kind of sounds like it could be the uniform because we changed from khaki to blue. Mm -hmm. So I reckon that's it. It'll be the uniform. Correct. (laughs) Why did I get so cross about the change of uniform? Uh, I don't know. It's symbolism and people Mm. like to hold on to traditions, especially when it's a 100-year-old organisation. I guess so, yeah. All right. Marty? Thank you. All right. Adam. This diagram shows the players' positions with 8.7 seconds left on the clock in Jordan's last Bulls game. Place this 
on the spot representing Michael Jordan. You'd remember this game? Yes, uh, yep, definitely. My 23rd birthday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How could I forget the weird number thing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty confident that uh, Mr. Jordan was there as time was winding down, and then he entered into the final moments and led to that iconic shot. Correct. <laughs> Marty, can you get rid of this shit? <laughs> Esther. In Scouting for Boys, Baden-Powell states that the Scout three-finger salute represents the three aspects of the Scout promise. Honour God and the King, help others, and what? The third part of the Scout law. Uh, of the Scout promise, more to the point, but it is, I believe, the Scout law, to live by the Scout law. Correct. I usually give the two-finger salute. <laughs> it's fair, Bob. Adam. Jordan chose his Bulls jersey number 23 to honour whom? He chose 23 because that was pretty much the closest number he could choose to be half of the number that his brother Larry wore. He couldn't wear 22 and a half, so he rounded it up to 23. It's to honour his brother... Larry. Correct. <laughs> Esther. According to the Wolf Cubs handbook, a leading cub will recite dib, 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 dib to a group response of dob, 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 dob in a ritual known as what? Because it's the Wolf Cubs. I believe it is the Grand Howl. Correct. Yeah, dib, spelt D-Y-B, means do your best, and dob means do our best. Yeah, Baden-Powell also invented WTF and LOL. <laughs> Adam, in Game 1 of the 1992 final series against the Portland Trail Blazers, Jordan shrugged to the crowd after achieving what two NBA finals records? All right. First is that he scored 35 points in the first half, which was a record. And the second was he did the shrug after he hit his sixth three-point shot made in that first half as well. Correct. <laughs> Esther. Before Scouts Australia replaced them with achievement badges, Joey Scouts could earn these four participation badges. Which badge have we obscured? Environment, adventure, buddy. I reckon it's going to be... Oh, stab in the dark, we'll go with the campfire challenge. Incorrect. The correct answer is... caring. Oh, of course it is. Adam, when Washington player Le Bradford Smith allegedly said... Nice game, Mike. After a 1993 match, Jordan vowed to get revenge at their next game by scoring how many points in the first half? Now, I believe this was a manufactured slight that Jordan used to create just to give himself some extra motivation when he played in the game at Chicago Stadium. So when they went to Washington, I believe that the number of points he scored in the first half was... 30-something. I think I will go with 36 points. Close. The correct answer is 37. <laughs> but you're right. Uh, he, he manufactured the slight to G's team up. Mm. Esther. In 1909, for an Australian scout to qualify for the tenderfoot badge they would be required to tie four of these knots. What is the name of this knot? I'm really glad you asked this question, Tom, because I think there was a couple there that I was a bit on the fence. Uh, but that is a clove hitch. Correct. 
Adam, if you get this wrong, then Esther, you are tonight's hard quiz champion. And you get a badge. <laughs> Adam. Jordan claims he went from Mike to Michael Jordan after a game-winning shot against which team? Most likely. It was probably from 1982. Uh, in the championship game against the Georgetown Hoyers, which got him known worldwide, basically, from the, uh, that point going forward. So I'm going to say it will be against the Georgetown Hoyers in 1982. Correct. <laughs> All right, let's move to the tie break. <laughs> All right, here we go. Esther, later inspiring him to develop the scout movement during the Second Boer War, then Colonel Baden Powell successfully utilised young cadets in what siege? I was hoping it was going to be a complicated question, Tom, but there's actually a scout park in Victoria that's named after this place? The answer is Mafeking. Correct. <laughs> All right, it's on you, Adam. If you get this wrong, then Esther, you are tonight's hard quiz champion. Adam. Jordan faced criticism from the African-American community when he refused to endorse Democratic candidate Harvey Gant, reportedly stating, Republicans what to... Pretty sure that he said Republicans buy shoes too. Correct. <laughs> okay, scores are still tied. That means it's time for a Tom's tiebreaker. Tom's tiebreaker. Spaghetti. So it's back to my subject, spaghetti. One question, nearest to the pin, will be tonight's hard quiz champion. According to its nutritional panel, the average serve of San Remo dry spaghetti contains how many milligrams of sodium, Esther? Great question. Uh, milligrams. Oh, I'm going to have a stab in the dark and say two. Adam. Four. The answer is 38, which means, Adam, you are tonight's Hard Quiz Champion! Yeah! Esther, you know what this means? You miss out on the badge. There she goes. Congratulations, Adam, you are tonight's Hard Quiz Champion, which means you get the big brass mug and you do the side off. Thanks for playing. Thanks for listening. I welcome your interaction with the show. Tap the microphone icon on my website to send me a voicemail. You can suggest discussion topics or guests you'd like to hear conversations with. Worldwide, the show has 198 ratings on Apple Podcasts with an average of 4.9 stars with 100 reviews across all providers. Thanks for your continued support. If you add a review, I'd love to read it out on a future episode. Your ratings and reviews are one of the best ways to support the podcast. If you enjoy the show, please tell your basketball-loving friends about it. Your word-of-mouth recommendations are truly worth their weight in gold. Stay up to date with my podcast and subscribe to my free NBA History newsletter. You'll receive exclusive details on upcoming episodes, future guests to appear on the show, and more. Sign up via my website or simply email me, inallairness at gmail.com. You can follow my show in various ways. Search In All Airness, three words, on your listening app of choice. The show is available on most platforms. Check the podcast archive for plenty more episodes with a great range of guests. Join me next time for another edition of the show.